Hi everyone, this is Barbara Beckman here. Today I'm going to be showing you my jelly prints that I made into this very whimsical Three Wise Men for Christmas time. Uh, it is the end of October and I have Christmas on the brain because I am a portrait artist and I do a lot of house portraits and a lot of people portraits and pet portraits. And I'm getting swamped already for Christmas commissions, which is great. So if you do see some of my videos that... Um, you know, I'm not posting as much. That's what it is. I'm just overwhelmed and swamped. So before I got too crazy with my regular job of every day painting portraits, I decided to have some fun this weekend and make a whole bunch of jelly prints. So that's what you're seeing here. So I started the process and I cut out from some um, copy paper, some circles, nothing fancy. This is stuff I have around my own house. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I really don't buy too many things that are specifically for the jelly uh, plate. I use what I have here. I shop in my own home. So I use some string. I use some of these flowers that I just had from another project laying around. I use um, the copy paper and cut out shapes, Q-tips, anything that I could find that would not damage my plate. I grabbed it today and stuck it on the side of my desk. So the side of my desk is a hot mess at the moment. So my first pull looked kind of interesting. It was um, done with the orange delusion paint, which I will put a link to somewhere below. Uh, I'm not a really big fan of these for the jelly print, but I love the color. So I knew that I wanted to do the wise men very, very, very whimsical and bright and colorful, which is why I chose to use this paint today. Um, the only reason why I'm not a huge fan of it, and there's the ghost print, the second pull there, um, it's just because it doesn't pull off the plate completely, and I'm not sure why. It must be something in the binding uh, agent that's in the paint where my regular acrylic paint that I use, whether it's the Craft Paint or uh, the Liquitex or the Premier uh, brand by the AC Moore, they tend to pull off, and when I do, when I release the paper from the plate, uh, while the paint comes off. So I always have a clean plate. But even having the dirty plate doesn't stress me out so much. I just keep going along anyway. So I'm doing a lot of colors that I know I'll be using. I was going to be using some red and some yellow in the blanket that goes over these camels backs. So I wanted that to be very vibrant and bright and I wanted you to see the, the colors uh, mixing or overlapping each other. So I did a lot of these um, these kind of prints today. So I use the stamp here. Again, I buy everything on clearance section. These are stamps that were very cheap. Even if you don't like the whole thing, I'm just cutting them up anyway. So you just want to see texture when you rip your paper. You're just going to, you're not going to know what it is. But I happen to love that Harlequin stamp. But I'm um, just saying in general, if you see a stamp that you think, wow, that's really ugly. I'll never use that stamp. You might use it for jelly printing. So nothing uh, goes to waste. If something's 20 cents and I know I can make a mark on a jelly print, I will try it. It's only 20 cents. So my first pull there was okay. And here I come back onto the orange. And this is my second one. So this is my second layer. Just pushing down lightly with my fingers. And there you go. So see how there's a lot of residue left here on the plate? There's still a lot of paint. So I try to pick it up with this other sheet, just a plain sheet with nothing on it. I'm pushing really hard. And even though uh, this with the regular acrylic paint, this would come up right away. I still have this hazy residue. And I think that's what bothers me most of all, even though it really doesn't seem to affect my prints. Um, and it does clean up in the end when I do clean it. I take it to the sink with some dish detergent. I use my hands and I just run it underwater and everything comes off anyway. Um, and I just keep continuing to go ahead. I'm making now my red ones. I'm not stressing too much about that yellow that's in the background there. The red paint will either rejuvenate it when I spread it on here with my brayer, or it will, you know, stay there and I will work around it. It doesn't really stress me out. Uh, nothing really stresses me out in, when it comes to art just because I love it so much. Um, but since I am a portrait artist and I have to do commissions that look like people, and pets and houses, which I specialize in, um, they're stressful. So this is my my kind of time where I play and let my hair down and let loose. This is where I run wild <laughs> with my jelly plate. 
But yeah, I find the jelly plate to be very, very relaxing because there really are no rules. You just kind of make them up as you go. So here's my third layer. So I had my orange, my yellow, and now I'm going in with my red. I'm not even pushing so much every single place because I want to see some of the other colors. I'm just giving it a light rub. Where I really want it to be seen, I might push a little harder. It's hard to tell that from the paper, um, from the video rather. So here's my, my next print, which is kind of cool. You see all three colors there, and that's what I'm going for. So the overall color on the top obviously will be red, and the you just switch it around. You can do red on the bottom, let it dry. You can put a yellow on top of that. Uh, an orange on top of that. You can just uh, fool around with the colors of which which choice you put down first. So just play around, have fun. So I love the string. It's just um, I use it. I go over and over it as much as I can here without having to pull it up. And even if I get just a tiny bit of red, I I don't care. It's just I'm looking for a lot of different colors on the sheet on the prints. And it kind of was kind of neat when I pulled it up. So you never know what you're going to get. So don't disregard anything. Always try to do another pull before you add more paint onto it. So when I picked this up, of course, all the paint that was underneath it is now still, it's drying a little bit, but it's going to have, give myself another pull. So here I go. I'm going to try to pull this up as best as I can. And like I said, the delusion paint doesn't pull up as great as other ones but it still gave me a good print. So I just flipped that around again to try to get even more up, push hard with my fingers. I got some up, you can see the difference there. And then I flip it around to the other side and try to continue to just get as much up as I can. So yeah, I just have fun and I take my time and I was working on all the colors that I needed. So I needed some blues and some purples for the sky because I wanted the sky to be this beautiful blue and purple sky that the uh, camels had just walked across the desert to go find the baby and I wanted it to be very vibrant and um, I wanted contrast against that so when the camels are standing up high and you can see that bright sky behind them I wanted to see that the contrast in color so I worked on a a lot of these vibrant colors. I worked on some camel colors and I worked on some purples like for the mountains um, and some pinks. I wanted that because they were so far in the background in my head as I was seeing it that I thought it would be kind of cool to put some purples and pinks into those mountains. And then I love to put orange with those colors. So I had them standing on like an orange um, ground or desert type thing where maybe the sun setting and it had like an orange glow. I had it in my head. I knew what I wanted. So I just kind of stuck to the colors that would inspire me to once I had these all out, I could rip up and put into my uh, composition here. So I just have a lot of fun. There's other videos on these that I've posted. So feel free to check those out. You'll see a little bit more of instruction. Um, I didn't spend too much time in this particular video showing you step-by-step -step direction. Um, I'm just really um, posting this so you can see because I'm a very visual person and sometimes I don't need to hear anybody talking at all and I can just see what they're doing. So hopefully I'm going slow enough here where you are seeing what I'm doing and I, I did speed up the video because in real time this took forever and I try to make my videos only 15 to 20 minutes long. Um, I've read a lot on YouTube and basically that's like I guess the average time frame that people spend watching them. Now if you if they're too slow for you there is a button somewhere over here you just have to find it and it's underneath the video I believe and it will speed it up. Um, so if my videos are too slow please feel free to do that until you get to the end. So I had these flowers like I said laying around. I had string and I just continued to go along and make a bunch of orange and red ones and some yellows. I also made some green ones because I knew that I would, I wanted some green in the camel's um, blanket as well. And I wanted to make it where you could see it against that blue uh, background for the sky. So I just added some teals into it. So I had set my colors out ahead of time and I didn't need to grab anything else. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun making these today. 
I also played around with the Golden's Liquid Acrylics. Um, I love these for the jelly plate, but they are extremely expensive. So I don't use them as much as I would like to just because I think they're ridiculously uh, priced. <laughs> um, again, I use them with the coupon when I can get them on sale because they are so expensive. But when I usually use my jelly plate, I use anything I have laying around. I've used my daughter's acrylic paint. She's only eight years old, so she even has like those student grades and the tiny little tubes. When I feel like she hasn't put the tops on and they look like they're going to die any minute, they're going to dry up, I'll use those. I'll use anything, basically. Um, and I've incorporated really high-quality paints that I have, like my Goldens, into a student grade paint. Um, I teach sip and paint classes um, around New York here, and I use Dick Blick's brand paint. It's Chromacryl, and it's a student grade paint, and that's what I use in all my painting classes. And I love that on the jelly plate. It comes, it's creamy, and it doesn't dry too quick, and it does incredible pulls. So I just have access to that just because I buy it by the gallon. So I don't know if they sell it small containers but if they do try it for your jelly plate it's i i love it and i'll put a link to that also dick blick chromacryl student grade paint a plus love it so here i'm using a stencil and all these stencils i get in the clearance section they are probably 9.99 when you buy them new but i never buy anything new i think i've said that before i only shop clearance sections things that they want to get rid of and get out of their store um know your prices and after a while, you will too have a huge stash like I do of things. So I'm using a mason jar top just because it's not going to hurt the plate. I know that there's no sharp edges to it and it makes a great circle. So walk around your house. Spatulas that are made out of that, um, they're like in the dollar store. Their Betty Crocker makes them and the dollar stores always have them. And they have like, I don't know what they're for. They're like weird things. They're like, um, it's kind of like, it's not plastic, it's like a really soft rubber and it, it looks like fringe and it looks like it's on the end of a spatula. I have no clue what you do with this cooking tool at all, so I use it in my art. So I, I just bought a bunch of those because I knew they were soft and I could make a lot of different designs and rub my the, the, um, the tool through the plate and come up with some really cool things. So shop around your house, shop for the dollar store, shop at clearance sections, and over time you will have an awesome supply too and be able to make these fun uh, different kind of um, prints. So this I got in the clearance section too. Um, it was an inexpensive stencil that I loved, and I'm just taking some regular craft paint. I believe that was folk art that I'm using. Um, I had it around. It's a little gloppy and thick because it's been opened and old and I just use it anyway because I like the texture and I think you'll see as the paint dries you'll really see that in the plate or the print rather so I like the way that came out that was pretty neat and it made a couple of them and this is the paper that I use to clean off my brayer on the side so I put them aside as they're dry I go ahead and I pull prints from them as well so that's why this is the cardstock the Nina cardstock that I use or the recollections so once I have my prints made, I just go ahead and I'm using a Canson mixed media pad and I start sketching in the ideas that are in my head that I need to get down now onto this paper so I can do this composition of the three wise men that I've had in my head for so long. Um, so the pad is by Canson and it is a 14 by 17 inch pad. It's a mixed media pad. It's high, high quality, good quality. I'm able to add a lot of glue to it, a lot of water, a lot of mixed media. I can add acrylic paint, watercolor. Totally love the pad. It's the XL series and I believe it's 98 pounds. Um, it comes with about 60 sheets in the pad and it's perfect for this collage work that I do. So again, I'll post the link to everything that I use in the comment section so you can take a look at that. Um, this particular one, let me just talk about this um, before I forget. I did create a pattern that is for sale on my Etsy store, so you can purchase the pattern to buy the downloads of these uh, three awesome little camels here and their blankets and the baby Jesus and the hay and everything else. It's um, fully downloadable. You can download it instantly. 
and they are available right now it's on the Etsy store um, but it's usually on my website I'm just having some problems with the downloads on my website so yeah that's where you can find it so what you would do is you would just download it you can print it out you can resize it you could turn these upside um, flip them into mirror images so you could have one camel facing one way or the other way you can the ideas are endless you can make a lot of different pictures from this one download so it's available there if you need it otherwise uh, give it a shot try to draw this out yourself or come up with um, you know a version of your own whatever you want to make whether it be uh, you know Christmas related or an animal or a dog or a cat or anything or a person you could do anything you want with these so um, just have fun so I cut out some pieces of paper here that I had from my prints and I'm using some browns, some two browns and a camel kind of color with a little tint of green to it. Um, and I'm just blocking in my dark areas now where what would be in shadow would be part of his neck and maybe with the blankets creating a shadow um, on the humps there. And I'm going outside the lines and I'm doing that because when I flip, when this dries, I flip it over and I'm able to cut around my lines that I have drawn out there. So I traced my pattern that I drew onto deli paper so I'm able to see through it. And I just work on the, another sheet of deli paper and I go up the whole camel covering everything. Okay, I keep referring back to my drawing too so you'll know where the placement of the eyes are and the ears. I mean, it's it's... Um, it's quite obvious where things should go. So that's it. I just kind of put some lights and darks and work around. I glue heavily everything together so nothing will come up. I don't need to scrape it with like a scraper because I'm using this old bristle brush that's seen better days and it's pretty hard tip um, and I'm just able to create a pretty good surface. There, are, There's no bubbles in any of these. So as I do them, I place them aside and I continue to just work around. So now I'm tracing again with black Sharpie onto a piece of deli paper and I'm going to be cutting out a piece from that red uh, jelly printed paper that I just made. And this is the, the uh, blanket that goes over the back of the camel's humps. So you'll see I have the stirrups there for the, or not the stirrups, the halter for the camel's um, mouth that's what I'm doing now and it goes quickly and I just work with the colors that I have that I made and different pieces to the animals and I it goes really really super fast I do them quickly I put them aside they dry quickly and then I'm able to cut them out and start working on the composition so yeah this is a lot of fun it's it's like um I relax when I do this. I've been paper doing paper dolls since I was a little girl. So this is something that I do watching TV. I don't actually watch the TV. I listen to it more or less, I should say. Um, but here I've traced out all the pieces and these come in the pattern. So you could just trace over whatever you printed out, um, you know, from my pattern. So here's the baby Jesus. There's the baby Jesus's face, the blanket that baby Jesus is wrapped in. And this right here is the bottom part where all the straw is. Now to make the straw, what I've done is just use different colored pieces of paper, it's just like straw would have some lights and darks, and then I threw in some yellows on top of that, um, some dark pieces, some light pieces, and to give it the indication that you know it is indeed straw. I use a heavy amount of glue. Um, I'm using the Mod Podge and I'm using the matte glue, and I love this one. It works great dries great, dries quick. Um, it does have a tiny bit of a sheen to it sometimes, even when I photograph it, even though it is matte, sometimes I just do see the reflection of the lights. Um, but in person, it's quite beautiful. So I just fill in all the little pieces here. There's little baby Jesus's face. And now I'm working on the little outfit that baby's wrapped in. And it looks like a mess. It's on one sheet of paper. Um, and when it's dry, like I said, I just turn it, flip it over, and I cut them out. So while they're drying, I move ahead and I start to piece together that beautiful blues that I worked on that I was telling you about, the backgrounds. Um, I wanted it to be very vibrant and bright. I just rip the sheets as I go, and I'm able to actually go into the uh, camels because I've already pieced them out. Remember, we just pieced them out on the deli paper. So they're drying, and when they're dry and I cut them out, I'm just going to put them basically where I thought they were before. Okay, I used, I left a little bit of the, the work that I drew 
you'll see as I get farther along. So I could kind of line it up, but you know what? If you cover the whole background and you can't see where they go, it doesn't matter. You just kind of place them wherever you think that they were. So the bottom here, I wanted to have like mountains in the distance, and that's why I chose these dark blues and some purples. I thought they were really pretty with some pinks, and that would be where the camel, there's a camel sitting on the ground next to the baby. So I thought that you could have like the mountain in the background of him, and then you could see where the skyline is, where they have, must have walked all these miles along the desert. So I like to add this pop of orange color. I love the pop of orange with the blues and the purple and the pink colors. Um, I love the combination together. So I chose that to have the ground where the um, camels would be standing on. And then I transitioned it to the left side of the bottom. I used a little bit of purple. I just like those colors together a lot. So once I had everything in the background pieced together nicely and I was happy with it, I went ahead and I started to piece on the camels. So I'm just putting on their blankets on their backs and the trim around their blankets and I glued them down and I used quite a, a bit of glue so they will not come up. Now here is the camel that's actually in the foreground. The other one is behind him and once I have my placement I just hold it there with my finger. I move it around till it looks nice and I'm able to glue it down. I just lift it up and slap some glue on. It goes pretty quickly. Once you have everything pieced together and cut out and it's all dry, it's uh, just like playing with paper dolls when you're a little kid. I totally love it. It's kind of like the upgraded version of the paper dolls. Like I loved playing with paper dolls, but they did not look this nice. Trust me. It took a, it took a long time to actually <laughs> learn how to do this. Um, but it is quite easy once you figure it out. Once you do it a couple times, it's like just like riding a bike. It kind of just all comes back. Um, it's very, very easy to do. So once I have everything glued in place, I start to uh, do a little bit of a black acrylic trim. I just water down some black so it has like a like an inky consistency more or less, not straight, thick, and gloppy out of a bottle. And I'm using just black craft paint for this uh, with a little water. So I outline everything, and I I like the the baby Jesus part, but it kind of reminded me of a lemon and I just, I didn't like it after all. I'm like, oh, I really, it looks like a lemon. So you can get rid of things if you don't like it. And that's why I kept this in the video. I don't like it. So I took it out. Simple as that. So all I did was I pieced papers right over it, goes right on top of it. I did like the star or the sunbeam or whatever that is coming from by the baby's face. So I kept that in. So you can change things as you go. If you piece everything together and you think, oh my gosh, I spent all this time piecing things together and I hate this part, just piece over it. It's as simple as that. It's art. Anything can be changed. Nothing's carved in stone. You cannot make mistakes doing this. If you don't like it, simply change it. So yeah, that's why I kept it in here. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Please give me a thumbs up. If you're interested in purchasing the pattern, please take a look below and you can go over to my Etsy shop and get the downloadable there. It's a download that downloads instantly. Um, please give me the thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe if you have not. Check out my other videos on the paper piecing uh, creations that I've done in the past. Well, that's it for today, everybody. I hope you liked the video. I hope you like my artwork. Um, if you don't see me around, um, that's because I'm probably painting portraits. Try to look at my website and see what else I do and see some of my portraits. They're kind of cool. Anyway, have a great day. Please subscribe. Please give me the thumbs up. Please leave a comment to let me know how I'm doing and what you might want to see more of. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day. Bye.